What's up guys? We're back. We're at Carabas Italian Grill and we're trying the most popular menu items, aka most of the menu. You're gonna see chicken, you're gonna see seafood, you're gonna see pasta, you're gonna see loads of alcohol. Don't even pray for me anymore. Let's just go. I'm running. I'm running in. See you never. I'm always ready and then it burns me. It's like that cute guy at the bar and then you find out he hates dogs and you're like <laughs> That's how I feel about sangria. I'm like, oh beautiful and then it and then it like does something terrible to me. Let's get to my favorite round, appetizers. We are starting with the calamari, which is their most popular appetizer, and they only use the the babies of the calamari. Okay, they're not like babies. It's not like there's like they take the babies from the mommy squids and they're like, you're coming to Carabas. The smaller ones are juicier. Just get with the program. This is the most popular menu item that excites me because I've calamari's always been like fine to me. Is that an entire squid? That might be an entire one. Let me count the legs. I'm eating a baby. My, my favorite really are the legs, which apparently is very just, my mom thinks that's gross, but I think you get more crunchy bits. So why not? We got the fresh burrata here. We have our little baby cute tomatoes, basil, red onions, balsamic, balsamic. Oh. This is going well. I haven't even had a drink yet. Okay, we already cut it open to see the beautiful, ugh. It also kind of reminds me of brains. Does that make sense? Like you cut open like a beautiful, like, head, and then brains. I don't know. <laughs> wow, that was delicious, even though I completely messed up that bite. That is smooth and creamy. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, you definitely need the olive oil on it because that makes it just smooth, creamy, and then you have the acid from the tomatoes and the onions. That's, if it's just super fresh but creamy. We have this beautiful blackberry sangria here. That is a strong boy. Flavor-wise, not necessarily alcohol-wise. It's very heavy on the blackberry. But smooth. I've already said this before in another video, but I would love this as a lipstick color or a nail polish color. The sangria burn you. A little bit. <laughs> it burned me a little bit. Mama Mandola's Sicilian chicken soup. Julia's fun facts. Damn it, put it here. The Mandolas and the Carabas started this restaurant in Texas. And Strangely enough, you would think it was started in Italy. No, it was started in Texas. And then they moved to Florida, because Florida gives us all the great things in the world. Florida man arrested for calling 911 after his cat was denied entry into strip club. This soup was made by one of the grandmothers. This soup is supposed to cure more than just hunger. It's supposed to cure sadness. Oh no, sangria. It'll cure my sangria burps. I want every bite to have a piece of chicken, and I think I might get that with how they, they made the ratio. That's very homey. It definitely tastes like someone's grandma's soup recipe. We have two big old meatballs here with ricotta. It comes in its own little bath. I'm sad there's only two in here, but I guess you're not supposed to be sharing it. This one's just for you. It's much sweeter than I expected. I was, I was waiting for it to be a little spicy almost, but no meaty and sweet and creamy. This one I think you also would dip in the bread. I feel like this one, because you're gonna have a lot of sauce left over. So you would definitely, this one you get to wipe the, wipe the skillet clean. The margarita pizza, which, fun fact, I have so many of them for this round. This is supposed to model the Italian flag. Still hurts me. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm gonna go for the cheesiest bite. This one, you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, whoa, oh. That's when you know. <laughs> Did you snort too? <laughs> Why am I not hear me? <laughs> I feel like this pizza's out to get me. It's it's very light, crispy, like very it's not super doughy bread. It like stands up on its own. And I would almost do a drizzle of the olive oil on it too. These are hand cut and hand breaded. So they've been made with a lot of love. I like the ratio here. When you eat mozzarella sticks from your cafeteria, you know how all the cheese sometimes can come out and you just have like this breaded carcass? This one's all still attached to each other, which is very hard to find. Favorite things, da calamari. And then surprisingly for me, the burrata. Calamari and burrata have won my heart for this round. Note to self, stop wearing bulky balloony sweaters. Stop, 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 stop. This is an Italian salad. It has Italian dressing, vinaigrette, duh, um, chicken, onions, olives, olives? Olives, there were olives in here. I, I could have sworn I spotted one, maybe I didn't. Um, carrots, tomatoes, onions, the works. Here we go. I really like that vinaigrette. This vinaigrette is really tangy. Mmm. I'm usually not this excited about a salad. We have our minestrone soup over here. I've been calling minestrone forever, and then I heard someone say it out loud. It's one of those words where like you see it written and then you never say it out loud, and then when you do, you're like, oh. Mm. I like minestrone. It sounds better than minestrone. Minestrone sounds like you're about to say the e, and you're and you just sit there and wait for them to say it, and then they don't. Okay, soup. We're eating it. I like the soup from the other round more. This is the Sicilian citrus spritz. I like this more than the sangria that we had, the blackberry sangria, because it's essentially an Aperol spritz, but way more, way more citrusy. If I watched horse races, I would drink this. We have the Prince Edward Island mussels, and it comes with a buttery white sauce with probably a bunch of like wine in it. You can never have enough garlic. Oh my gosh. These mussels, yes. When it's lemony and buttery and just not super overpowering, so you're actually getting the taste of the mussels. Those are like juicy little ones, juicy little guys. <laughs> What's this taste like, I wonder? After I ate like three of them. Okay. This sauce is way better than that vinaigrette. I know that they're not competing in any world. They're not even the same category, but that is really, when you dip it in the bread, yep. We have the chicken Brian pizza. You're probably wondering who the hell is Brian. Julia's fun facts, go. Brian is the city, town, place in Texas that the family immigrated to. And this is gonna be really delicious because there's sun-dried tomatoes, chicken, goat cheese, mozzarella, uh, basil, and it's pizza. Oh, buddy. What is that sauce? Oh. They put fucking butter on pizza. Wow. I'm, I'm a fiend for goat cheese. Oh my God, I'm so glad we're gonna eat this in another round too. Wait. Fried zucchini sticks. Zucchini and I don't get along, but maybe I, I will like it because it's fried and it's in little chips. Or not chips, sticks. Maybe if mom, you served this as zucchini fries, I would have liked it as a kid. Cause I like this. They're like perfectly crispy. And then the sauce on here is lemony and tangy and brilliant. It's not winning first place. That pizza's winning first place. Don't even think about that. I'm just putting pizza at first place and the rest of these are all runners up. That's how I'm ending this round. This is really, really beautiful. Wow, I can't believe I get to put these in my mouth hole. We're starting with 
the fettuccine caraba. More fun facts for you. This one was actually made by accident. Um, one of the owners here, founders, they took all the leftovers that they had in the walk-in freezer and just kind of threw it together. And they originally thought it was like a little too American with the cream and the chicken and the peas and the mushrooms. But now it's one of their most popular menu items. Fettuccine for me can be very um, one note. I hate when fettuccine is not salty enough. This one actually has the right amount of salt to me. It's extremely cheesy and creamy, don't get me wrong. But it actually has more seasoning and flavor in it. That's great. We're gonna break up the pasta with this Johnny Rocco salad, which sounds more like a crazy cartoon character, like Johnny Bravo almost, right? It's made for two uncles named Johnny and Rocco. And there are three pieces of scallop, four pieces of scallop in here and four pieces of shrimp. That's a lot of scallops for a salad. Oh, I really like this. You can taste a lot of the olive, like the brininess in it. And it has sun-dried tomatoes. And I really like that the scallops are grilled. We have the mezzaluna, AKA little half, half moons. And these are handmade. Fun fact, this half moon pasta is made only for this one specific pasta place in Massachusetts. So that means you can only get this one, this specific one at Carabas. That is the perfect amount of creamy, but just a hint of spice, not too much. That's sinful. I would order that on my deathbed for sure. This little cute little pink color from the prickly pear. Prickly pear doesn't have too much of a strong flavor though. It's much more, I feel like, a color thing than a flavor thing heavy on the tequila. I'm not mad about it. This is definitely my favorite drink. That was an obvious one that this would be my favorite because it's tequila. I really love the color too. I don't want this one as a lipstick though. That would mute my, mute my skin tone out. This round is full of family recipes. Johnny Carrabba's, one of his favorite menu items is, is this lasagna. He gets it made for his birthday every year, which means it probably is better than a birthday cake if you're getting this for your birthday, wouldn't you think? Kind of also, it's like a cake, it has layers. And you could consider the ricotta frosting. It's like seasoned sausage with ricotta. If I was going to have a savory birthday cake, I would definitely have a lasagna. I'm totally behind you, Johnny Carrabba. I get it. We have the rigatoni, which has a bunch of sausage balls in here. And this huge clump of goat cheese, which don't just eat the goat cheese on its own. They instruct you to actually mix it around. Otherwise, you're just gonna get like a pound of goat cheese on one bite. So these are thick rigatoni bites with cute little sausage balls. I mean, you've seen like the super tiny ones when you get in those little soup cans, but this is like way better. This is actually the mini size you want. Okay. It's peppery and tangy and creamy. I think I like the flavors in this more than the lasagna. I'm a freak for goat cheese. They come in those little two packages. I eat like one of those a week. That is amazing flavor. They went through almost 150 different iterations of the recipe because they just couldn't make up their mind. And then finally one day they were like, F it, it's not gonna get any better. This is where we're leaving it. And I'm glad that that's where they left it. This is an incredible amount of pasta in here. It's like an entire box worth. We have a spicy marinara sauce. Watch out, people. It's not that spicy. Again, my mom would say this is too spicy. It's totally tolerable. Even when you take a bite of the scallops, you can taste the muscle flavor in there. Considering it's five pounds of pasta, it's actually pretty light. This was actually a really tough round to rate. I'm calling it a four-way tie between salad, fettuccine, Little, little moonies in the rigatoni. The polo rosa. It's stuffed with fontina cheese and prosciutto. And ooh, do you see that lemon? Is that lemon butter just dripping? Is that just, or is that just regular butter? That might just be regular butter. And we have basil in here and we do have mushrooms and a bed of spinach. 
that fontina cheese is just the perfect amount. It's not overbearing, it's not taking over the dish. And it just has a bunch of flavor. I'm gonna eat one piece of spinach so I don't feel so terrible today. Good. The Marsala wine comes from Italy, from Sicily. I don't know if this one could be as good as the Polo Rosa. I don't know if it stands a chance because that one has cheese and this one doesn't. This sauce might be better than that sauce. That's really smooth. These are in a tie right now. I like this Sangria Rita. I think this is my favorite drink that I've had so far of the day. And it's a Sangria with tequila. It's a nice halfway point for me. I want it in one of those camel backs and I, so I could take it to like work and sip out of it. We have the ribeye with this lemon butter, which if you recall, the lemon butter is phenomenal. Should be put on everything. And of course, you gotta top it with some shrimp. Ugh. I used to think that filet mignon was the best cut and I have, I am a full believer and I've changed my opinion Ribeye is far superior. It doesn't even need the shrimp, it truly does not. Am I gonna still try it? Of course I am. The shrimp is also well seasoned and delicious, but you don't need it at all. I can't believe I have to do all four of these still when I've already found my one true love. I feel like this is how like The Bachelor must feel when he finds his true love on the show and he still has to date all those other girls and he's like, no, I found her. Shrimp? and scallop spadino. This is loaded with garlic and lemon butter and breadcrumbs. So this is, by just the description itself, going to be perfect. Wow. Scallops are already rich. Adding lemon butter sauce and the breadcrumbs. Ooh. I'm a believer in carabas now. I like the shrimps more in this sauce than the scallops because I think scallops are already super rich. I would do this with just all shrimp. This is the Mahi Wolf. The name Wolf isn't just because it's like aggressive. Ed Wolf is the person who found their first two places in Texas for the Carabas, which fun fact, those are the two locations that are still solely owned by the family. Oh, hi. oh I just got some of the cream sauce in that margarita. That's gonna be bad. This Mahi Wolf is very delicious, buttery, extremely rich, but that sauce can go they, I said in the beginning it should go on everything, and I think actually by putting it on the mahi, they have proven that it goes on everything. This is the chicken brian. Chicken brian has peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, basil, goat cheese, and is grilled. That was so much goat cheese, I just put it in my mouth. I love goat cheese, but I just put like all of it in my mouth. I think if you smothered everything in goat cheese, I would automatically tell you it's amazing. It doesn't matter to me, just goat cheese when it's super creamy, soft. It almost looks like butter on here. Oh, I'm gonna sound so stupid. I'm about to be like, it makes it extremely edible. I don't know, like, I don't know, that's not a real review. This is extremely edible. Eggplant parm, we got a blanket of mozzarella on here and we got some beautiful marinara. And we have a beautiful little bed of penne. It's very soft. I hate when eggplant gets all chewy and soggy. This is soft, not soggy. My feelings on this round are there were too many winners, not enough losers. The winners of this round, hands down, have to be the ribeye and then the mahi-mahi. That cake is staring me right in the eyeballs and I don't like it. There's a layer of hazelnut in here actually with the ice cream and it looks like caramel as well. Ooh, crunchy and crispy. It has that sweet and salty balance. It tastes like fall and warm. Up next, we have the limoncello bread pudding, which you guessed it, soaked in limoncello, and it's brioche bread. So it's gonna be super sweet, super fluffy, warm, happy, you name it. Gives you butterflies, whatever else you wanna say about it. Oh God. The ice cream got stuck to the back of my front tooth and oh, that hurt. Not your fault, my fault. This is super delicate. It's like a very gentle little baby cute dessert. The limoncello isn't too strong. It's very soft. Tiramisu cake, beautiful layers going on right here. Lots of chocolate, probably lots of coffee. We'll find out, here we go. 
tiramisu is very light, not too crazy on the espresso, and actually way more chocolate heavy, which it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. There's a lot of chocolate on the plate. Peppermint frost martini. We've got vodka in there, and we got some liqueur, and probably lots of sweet stuff, candy canes, happiness, holiday spirit, Santa. Oh God, that is Christmas. I'm like freshening my breath before I get to the next thing. So I'm just gonna eat all the mint on the outside. It's kind of like brushing your teeth, except not at all, because there's alcohol and sugar. You want it? I mean, no. Aww. Oh. That was so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Cannoli cake, layers of cannoli frosting on the inside that looks like cookie dough, but it isn't. And little cute little pistachio, little niblets in there. And of course, you got business in the front, party in the back. But look at all that. That is an actual chocolate chip party happening right there. <laughs> We're professionals, okay? The cake is super moist, so it sticks to your tongue and your throat in a good way. That's not a critique. I think the real star is the back of the cake with the chocolate chips. I think I would be one of those terrible, terrible humans that just eats the backside and leaves the front. That makes me so happy. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's actually not that chocolatey. Like I was worried it was gonna be too chocolatey and like just sometimes they, when people get excited about chocolate in a dessert, they just make it explode all over it, and you're like, I get it. This actually, because of the mousse, it makes it very light, but definitely still dense if you ate the entire thing. It's definitely still gonna be a brick in your belly. We've eaten a lot of brownie sundaes on this show, and I think people should sub out their brownie sundaes for this type of situation more because this does the same job as a brownie sundae, but better. That's my hot take right there. Okay, my favorites are for sure the apple crostata and the chocolate dream. If you are a chocolate fiend, you're going with this one. If you're not a chocolate fiend and you're everyone else in the world, you're going with this one. The peppermint martini, if you get to come here during the holidays, drink a few of these with the fam, you know. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm sorry I keep eating my food with the, with the fork the way that you hate the sound it makes. I'm sorry. And again, we're packing up the leftovers. We're taking it home. I gotta go. Chelsea has to go. She has to go more than I have to go. They are, they're ready to kick her out. So, oh, and, the, and my foot's asleep. Oh no, it's fine. It's waking up. Okay, gotta go. It's actually, okay, it's tingling all the way up my leg. Are you just eating now? We're not, stop. <laughs> <laughs>